want to play for you some Lane Kiffin audio as they've got a big game coming up on Saturday. And he is worried about the stands being filled for kickoff and coming out of the break in the third quarter. And you run out the tunnel and it looks like, you know, a high school game um, playing in a college stadium. You can't let that affect you. I mean, you know, there's psychology to that, obviously. There's a home field advantage for a reason. And, you know, when it goes the other way, you kind of have that feeling, you know, that, man, are we still really playing in a game here? You know, the players have to fight that. So, again, we use that as a learning lesson for our guys. So, if that's the case, that's the case. But, <clears throat> I mean, I, I'm, I'm worried about what I can control. I've tried social media in here for two years. So, you know, we'll worry about what we can control, and that's getting our players ready to play. When he's talking about social media, trying to pump up the fans and drive attention to the program and get people excited via social media. Ole Miss is number 14 of the country. They will host number seven, Kentucky, in the Grove coming up on Saturday. This will certainly be in the tasty top five tomorrow when I rank my five favorite college football games of the weekend. And Saban's talked about this. He wants students to stay around longer. You've seen the crowds at UCLA. They've been just hot garbage. I mean, it's embarrassing the type of crowds they're getting at UCLA. And look, every single year I try to get to a new college football venue and experience it because I love the atmosphere of college football. And I can tell you that most of the time the party is happening in the parking lot. You know, unlike the NFL where you drive to this monstrous stadium and parking lot off of a highway with no soul and no beauty, and you're just in the middle of a cement wasteland, you might as well go in the stadium. But when you're on these beautiful campuses and everybody spends their whole week getting ready for this tailgate and it's tradition and it's family and it's home cooking and all of this, I mean, especially at the Grove. When I went to the Grove, I'm like, do we have to go inside? And they were playing Alabama. It was so amazing to be outside. These were tailgating spots that had hard wiring for their electronics. You would rent out spaces. There was hard wire, not like Wi-Fi, because these were these legacy setups. A lot of these college stadiums were not selling beer until recently. And... The party's outside, plus they're four-hour games. And so you're like, well, I'll stay out here for one more beer or one more hottie toddy, and I'll go in midway through the first quarter. Or at halftime when I get to go back out for free booze and food, I'll have a few more chips. Uh, Maybe I'll stick around for one more sandwich. And then I'll go in midway through the third quarter because goodness knows this is a four-hour expedition anyway. And college has gotten better creating better amenities in stadiums, but it's still not like the NFL stadiums where these things are gleaming palaces with all these social areas, walking decks, jumbotrons. I mean, college stadiums are 100 years old and have just been added on to, which makes them awesome, which I love, but there's no bells and whistles. Like, you go to Alabama, you think that's going to be Jerry World? No, that's a stadium from 75 years ago that just got added on every 20 years as the program expanded. You know, it's like a hodgepodge, this deck here, and this end zone is closed there. And, you know, so you don't go inside for this unbelievable fan experience. You go inside to watch a football game. Sit in your seat and watch the football game. And I got news for you. Most fans in 2022 don't want to sit in their seat and watch a football game. They want to do anything else. They're on their phone. They're kind of paying attention. They're taking pictures for Instagram. They're following their fantasy team or betting on something or watching something else on their screen. They're texting. They're doing Instagram. They're doing TikTok. And then there's a football game going on. And so, plus you've got college students whose attention spans are the size of a gnat. And you, you wonder why. So, I don't think it's a problem because college football is wildly entertaining and popular and profitable. But these coaches are all bent out of shape and admins are bent out of shape because they're like, why do we have empty stands? Well, there's a lot of reasons. Are you still making a lot of money? You are? Then who cares? You know, it's the bit. Who cares? 
Who cares? Midway through this game, Ole Miss, Kentucky, by the by seven minutes into the game, it's going to be a full house. And by seven minutes into the second half, it'll be a full house. And unless it's a blowout, it'll be a full house right through the end of the fourth quarter. So, you know, Nick Saban complains about this because they destroy Coppin State by 49 points and people leave at the end of the third quarter. Well, you know, what are you going to do? You're still making money hand over fist. So say the fact that this is a noon game, though, will people push that party a little longer in the first quarter? Yeah. Again, midway through the first is when they'll finally fill up the stands, and then they're going to go back out for an elongated halftime. But you are asking people to stick around for four hours. A college football game that has decent offense is a four-hour endeavor. It's at least three and a half, usually 345. And if you have, hell, if it goes to overtime, it could be 415. So I can't blame these fans for doing that. 